Okay, now the car's in the air. This is the wishbone suspension we're gonna change. We've got the large rear bushing here. And then the front bushing is actually part of the wish arm itself. Here at the front where it attaches to the hub, we're just gonna take this nut off here and then hopefully we're gonna break the ball joint seal there without a ball joint separator, but if necessary, we can get one. And then that will release that. We've already undone the nut bolt there. Let's crack into it. Okay, so the first step to removing these is obviously they don't get disturbed very often. So you can see there's quite a lot of corrosion just here. So I'm just gonna get a wire brush, brush all as much rust as I can off of those, those threads there. And also we're gonna remove these bolts down here. So get as much rust as I can off these three bolts here. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of penetrating oil on them, which is different to WD-40. We're gonna be putting some plus gas on them, which is a penetrating oil. But penetrating oil acts with a capillary action. And what that means is, that it will kind of suck itself along any tiny little fissure that it can find to get itself into the into the groove. So it's the molecules and penetrating are much smaller than lubricating oil because it will go into the smallest of crevices, even on very tight bolts. So there is a penetrating oil called Knocker Loose, which apparently has a special formulation which works especially well. It's very expensive. Personally, I'm not sure that it's worth that. So I'm, I'm happy to use Plus Gas, which is a much more reasonable price. But I will put links to both in the description if you want to try them out. There we go. Let plus gas going on now. We'll just leave that penetrating oil just to soak in for a few minutes and then we'll come back and crack all those bolts off. Okay, so you'll note I've put a bit of penetrating oil on the track rod end just there. That's because we'll be changing the track rod later on. See the video linked here if you want to see that video as well. For now, we're just going to crack on with getting these bushes out. We've got some penetrating oil on those nuts now. Let's get them undone. Okay, so these are just 13 mil heads on them, these bolts underneath. I'm using a six point socket there rather than a 12 point socket to reduce the risk of rounding off. Okay, there they go. Hold off. You'll notice that there's a retaining strap at the top there. It's got the three captive nuts. That's all going to be replaced. We need to undo the, the hub nut here, which is in the centre of the hub here. As I say, I loosened it before I, before I jack the vehicle up. It's pretty loose now. And these tabs tend to break away. You'll need a new one of those when you refit. I'll put the part number in the description for the new one of those. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to disengage the spline shaft in the centre of the hub. We need to push it straight through. Best way to do that, honestly, is with a hammer and a drift of some sort. Be careful hammering onto these because you can actually ruin the, the head there. So just be careful, this will be all right, I think. That's it, that's it, that's it, yeah. so just pull it out. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to remove this nut, which is at the front of the suspension arm. Now do note, this is on the left-hand side of the vehicle from the driver's perspective. On the right-hand side, you will need to jack up the engine slightly probably loosen the engine mount as well just to get the engine out of the way because the sump fouls on the on the nut as you remove it to remove this bolt here to get access we can't get the socket in as it stands because the sump's actually in the way there so what i've got to do is just apply a little bit of pressure it's not ideal jacking the engine up on the sump honestly but i'm going to spread the load over the whole width of it so hopefully there won't be too much of a stress and we're just going to do it very quickly okay so all of you want to start jacking it There we go. Other guys on the internet suggest that you can just jack up that side of the engine, and that's probably true, but it's putting so much stress on the engine, we're not getting enough clearance, so we're just gonna have to loosen this top engine mount just to give it a little bit more movement on this side here. I'll release this one here. So I'll take the nut off. Okay, go up please. One more. Oh, that's it. Yeah, we can just about, at least to break the seal. So that's now coming. It's an 18 mil socket, that one. Yes, we're out. On this side, it's totally fine. It's quite straightforward. However, do note these are in extremely tight. So I'm going to use several extension bars to bring this out of the front of the vehicle. And then we're going to use a breaker bar with an extension bar on it in order to undo this because it's an extremely tight. There it goes. 
that's the, the worst of it. Once that initial tension's off it, it's really easy to take off now. On this side it's totally fine with a ratchet but on the other side you've got very limited access to that sump in the way and I'd recommend using an 18 millimeter ratchet spanner which generally don't come in the kits that you get so it's worth investing one to save a couple of minutes and a bit of bit of effort there it goes there's the old bolt out no that does need to be replaced it's a stretch bolt so it will need to be angle tightened after reinstallation so you'll need a new one link in the description we're going to try and leave with this arm away using this brake bar got it going through the central hole here now i'm going to try and pry it on the anti-roll bar here this has got a steel pin part of the arm in fact going through the rear bushing there so we want to leave the front part forward and then that will allow us to lever the rear part out Ah, let's get a bit of move in there, that's good. Uh, maybe on the drive shaft. Yeah, that's better. There we go, that's it. Okay, that's how you get the old front suspension arm out. Now we need to get the rear bushing out there and then we'll start to reassemble everything. You just know there's a little dot there on the top of the housing and there's a protruding bit of rubber there. That's to align the two and because, for reasons I'll show you in a moment, it's very important to get the alignment correct. So we've got this special tool to remove the, the old bushing. So what we're going to do is start with this section here. This will actually drive the, the old bushing out. Location, this is quite important. If you get this wrong, it will score the side of your housing. You don't want that. So get the threaded rod through. You want the short threaded rod to be at the back because there's not a lot of clearance. And then screw this removal pad, I suppose you'd call it, onto that threaded rod. But you notice that I'm keeping the pressure on to keep it located correctly. It's very important it's located correctly. Okay, so that's on now. And now we can put the, the receptacle on the front, if you like. This is the receptacle. So you'll notice there's this sort of big positive bit here and this sort of recess bit there. And that's really to allow for this section of the, of the subframe. So that section wants to go in roughly that, that sort of space. Okay, so that's roughly on the right place. And finally, we want this threaded section to go on the end. And that's what's going to pull it through. That's a 24 mil nut on there. Now, you can obviously use a ratchet, should you wish to, but personally, I think it's an awful lot easier with a, a ratchet spanner like this. Now, as I turn it, you can start to see that going through. You can start to see that it's protruding less and less. There it goes. Now that the old one's out, you can see the inside of this. It's obviously got a lot of debris in it. We will get a wire brush on a drill driver and get that cleaned out. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. What we'll do now is we'll get a little bit of grease in there and we'll get the same tool we just used, but set up slightly differently to get the fresh bushing in. Right, so it's going to put a little bit of grease in here. Quite a hot day, so it's, it's actually spreading quite thinly, which is quite handy. Doesn't need a lot. That's fine, there's got to be a work of art. Okay, so here's the new bushing. I'm just going to mark it so that I can get it lined up the same as the old one was. So on the outside here, it's actually slightly different to the old one. I'm going to get the old one and the new one to be aligned properly because this is the arm that's going to go into it. That arm needs to go into that rubber and needs to be aligned properly because if it isn't, you're going to get a corner here trying to align with a flat bit here and that's going to cause you a problem so it's really important to get these aligned correctly you are going to want a sharpie it's important to remember that this little notch here is in the same place as that notch was there and also that the flat bits here along with the flat bits here so if you were to look at them like that straight through they will be perfectly aligned up so in this case what i'm going to do is this is the old one right there Exactly there. If it's like out by a millimetre, it doesn't matter because it'll self-correct, but if it's out by like five, ten millimetres, it ain't gonna work. So we're just gonna mark that there, right there, and then also on the top. Okay, so to use the tool to get this in, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need the wider of the two. So this is a narrow one to get it out. You want the wider one, and that's just gonna sit in here in the rear of the housing. You're obviously gonna want the threaded rod, and then gonna thread that in there. So that's the first thing we'll do. Let's get that in place. Okay, now we can get this in. And as I say, that line on the top, that wants to be lining up with, as close as we can get it, that little 
mark on the top of the housing, so about there. And now, this has a little cut out of the top there, that's just to remind you that's where the line is. So you want to get that on there as well. And that will fit nicely into the top of the, of the bushing. Get the nut on and just get some tension on it. There you go. So now you've got just a little bit of gentle tension on it, you can just make sure that you've got that line pretty good. And I think we have actually got that line very good now, lined up with that little little dot there. Just make sure it's clean, make sure there's no grit on it, anything like that, because it will really haunt you if there is. Before I get it off the end, I'm just going to give it a little tap with a hammer just to free it all up. The next thing to do now that we've got the new bushing in place, got the old arm out, is in fact to remove the old ball joint here. First thing I'm going to do is just use a wire brush, just get as much as I can off of there to make removal of that nut as easy as possible. I don't really want to be cutting it off with an angle grinder um, if, if I can avoid it. So. Uh, the cleaner that thread is, the easier it will be, and then we'll put a bit of penetrating oil on it as well. There we go, that's cleaned up a bit. Whilst it's tempting to skip this step, your future self will thank you because it will be that much easier to get the, get the nut off. So. There we go, we'll leave that to soak in for a few minutes and then we'll try and crack it off. Okay, so that's been soaking in for a minute, so we'll now give it a go and try and undo that. Hopefully that's actually rotating. And it's not the whole ball rotating, you can check with the spinner. Yep, indeed, it is coming off properly, no problems. Obviously you can hold that central bit steady with a hex bit should you need to. Well, I think it might be a star bit actually. Let's see if we can free it up without using a ball joint splitter. There it goes. We can now get the new suspension arm in. A little bit of grease will definitely help at this point. Put a bit of grease in the, in that central hole there. Okay, so I'll throw it up. Haven't got to be too precise. Now we need to get a breaker bar and get it through this main hole here. And then get it so <sighs> that looks very good now. That'll go in <coughs> like that. Okay, so now we've got the arm in, the first thing to do is to get the new bolt in, get it aligned up. It does go in very, very tight, so obviously it's important to get the alignment absolutely correct. So we'll get it roughly in and start turning it to finger tightness now. Okay, it's not going to be perfectly aligned as you get it in, so you're going to have to just wriggle around a bit with it. So it's halfway in now. Just going to jiggle it up and down a bit just to see if we can get, there you go, free it a bit. Feels like it needs to go up slightly, so... Right, yeah, that definitely feels like it's catching a bit better now. So it's an 18 millimeter bolt. Personally, I found it was worthwhile getting an 18 mil ratchet spanner. Okay. Okay, so now that that bolt's in, we need to tighten it up to 70 newton meters and then by a further 90 degrees. So it is an extremely tight. That's it, 70 newton meters. Now to get it to a further 90 degrees, that's super, super tight. So I'm gonna have to get a whole bunch of extension bars we get out the front of the car and do it that way. Right the way up, leading up to the, the bolt there. And now we're going to give it an extra 90 degrees. So starting at about 15 degrees before vertical. I want to finish at 15 degrees before horizontal. I'm just going to make it a bit easier using this extension bar. <coughs> That's about it. I'd say maybe a tiny bit more. Got to account for the bend of the bar. Yeah, that's it. That's about it. Okay, so now it's time to get this lower ball joint engaged with the hole in the hub there. I'll put the spline shaft of the drive shaft back into the hub, make sure this plastic, I think it's an ABS sensor, is still engaged with it. And then we'll tighten this up and it's 20 newton meters that needs to be tightened up to plus 90 degrees. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that because it's not terribly straightforward. I'm just going to put a bit of grease on the end of the drive shaft just to help it ease it in a little bit. So just a little bit, not a lot. And remember, it was steering right when we took it off, so we'll have to twist it as we put it back in. Yeah, that grease really helps, really helps. Okay, so we've just got the steering corrected now to straight ahead. Honestly, it's, it's just too difficult to get this spline hub in without 
moving it straight ahead. So I'm just going to give it a little whack just to make sure it's solidly on. Okay, so now we will get the new hub nut on. Just finger tight, there we go. There we go, it's nicely in. That's it. New nut on. Okay, so you're supposed to torque this up to 20 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Unfortunately, it is virtually impossible to get a torque wrench in to that, that point there. So what I'm gonna do is do it by feel to what feels like about 20 Newton meters and then give it 90 degrees. Uh, in fact, you can't even get a deep offset in there. It's gonna to have to be a regular spanner. That's it, pulling that ball joint through, which is great. That feels like about 20 Newton meters to me now. So now I'm gonna go a full 90 degrees on top of that. That's about 60 degrees to the side of the vehicle. So that's two thirds of the way. And then about another third. There we go, that's it. That's as close as you're gonna get without a very expensive tool, I think, to get that torqued up. And there you have it. That is how you change the front suspension arm on your Mark I Fabio. Really hope this helps. Do please consider hitting like and subscribe if it has. I have a lot more Fabio videos to come. And if you've got any questions or any constructive feedback, please do leave them in a comment below. I do believe feedback is a gift when respectfully delivered. See you in the next one. Really loud car going past. And I'm just to off and get on with this. Um, so, it's not in. Oh, I was gonna say, the other one was so much easier than this. Fucking hell. <laughs> It's a bloody convoy. Sorry. Have you just let one go? No. Oh, something stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's filthy animals everywhere. <laughs> oh, vermin. <laughs> <laughs>